Hello my soccer universe and welcome to this week's review of Ligue 1 and the Eredivisie. This time no trouble in France so um, we can talk about things happening on the field although there was some little trouble as you saw in the thumbnail for PSG. But speaking of trouble, I actually intended, I asked, as I said, Idris from Amour du Maillot, sign up to his channel, he's doing videos in French and in English, so uh, if you're a fellow collector, uh, you might very well enjoy his channel. So I asked him and he sent me a really nice WhatsApp uh, audio message that, you know, at least some bar, uh, bits and pieces from a local I wanted to add to this video. And I cannot manage to get the audio on the video or anywhere there. So uh, the gist of it uh, is more or less that there is no overarching theme that uh, he says, well, he more or less implored me, see every incident uh, separately. And that, yeah, Marseille is a team. And uh, yeah, we all know that, that causes a lot of um, emotions, positive as well as negative. And so uh, whenever Marseille is playing, it's anyway a hot potato game. I did not know, and this was a very interesting insight, that uh, Nice, in addition, already has a very hot fan base that is actually very right-leaning. So um, that might definitely add to that spectrum as well. Though I'm not sure about Marseille, but uh, he, he says it's basically things are getting uh, anyway already heated and even without covid it would probably have exploded given how everything uh is trending and that of course the sports minister doesn't make it easier because uh yeah she's happy that her son is playing rugby and not football which is of course not helping matters in any way uh and also the last bit of pieces that jean michel olas he more or less did not even took his own fans, uh, you know, held them accountable. It was all, all, all about Marseille not wanting to play the game, which I also find a little bit uh, weird because, you know, <clears throat> but seemingly everyone in France is looking after themselves and they're not looking for a community anymore, which is probably a larger issue that I don't want to discuss here, but is sad to hear. Um, so, yeah. That's it from uh, the trouble in France. Uh, Idris's point of uh, oh, I'm, the info I got from him, and I tried to uh, distill it down uh, what I heard, and I uh, very much want to thank him because I think in those situations, since we don't hear, at least I don't hear that much from France, it's always good to hear a local perspective as well, and from a great guy like Idris, even better. Let's stay in league uh, uh, for what's hap happening this weekend. I mean, um, Lens, Lille and Nice dropped all points uh, early in the week. So, a uh, weekend, not uh, early. Lens only 2-2 against Angers. Uh, Lille 1-1 against Nantes and uh, Nice even uh, managing to lose at home to Metz. I always have, have a feeling that Metz is more or less result was underperforming, but uh, the overall performances are not all that bad. The big story, and I was really trying hard to see a big story uh, coming from France, but for me the big story again is PSG related. And it is not that Ramos made a debut and that Messi scored a hat-trick of assists. Um, slowly he's finding his way into the team, uh, lo and behold. But the Neymar injury. Uh, that might see him out for at around six weeks, if not more. Um, but we'll get to that. I mean, PSG, uh, Neymar scored a score goal for an offside goal, but um, uh, Santetien actually took the lead. But then uh, I think when Mbappé was running clear on goal, he was brought down by uh, Bukolo Jack. I honestly feel this was a little harsh red card because there was a second player there. So I'm not sure uh, that it was that it, that it was kind of a last man foul, but it stood up and then from that free, free kick Messi uh, lobs it onto Marquinhos' head uh, and he scores uh, the uh, the equalizer right before the halftime. And in the second half, uh, when the snow came down, and I, re I remember the last season Classico where uh, Messi got drenched and you could see how cold he is. I was actually really worried about Messi with in all this snowstorm and, you know, visibly wet. However, uh, he assisted Di Maria in the 79th with a really nice run. Um, 
put in a, 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 a cross and the, the and Di Maria gets the lead for PSG and it was only a matter of time. It's not at the end the moment is really really have, having a hard time, but fighting, fighting at least. Uh, and then the name injury happened in the 88th minute where, uh, you know, it was a run, uh, a tackle coming to, to the ball and uh, the way Neymar steps up, he kind of slides from the shoe of the Saint Etienne player and twists his ankle. It, really ugly. I found a picture of how the ankle is twisted and I was very briefly thinking, should this be the thumbnail? I said, no, I cannot even watch this one. How should I get you to, 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 to do this? Uh, and the funny thing, funny, um, the funny thing is, obviously, uh, you see that and you think there must be an injury. This will be, this is pretty, pretty rough. But I didn't see the foul necessarily live because uh, I was watching the run up to the Godforsaken last game. Uh, but I suddenly see Neymar crying, yeah, you know, really. And my first thought is not, oh, he's injured. No. What injury is he feigning now this time? But then uh, very quick, quickly, it, 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 I, I realized that nah, this must be really serious. And then you see the replay. Yeah. Uh, for once, it was right. And he was not rolling, rolling, rolling. He was really lying there in pain. And he had to be stretched off. And I think, yeah, this will take some time until he comes back. And this might actually save PSG's season in a way. Because now you can only play Mbappe and Messi. And maybe this might work and you can get some stability in there. Now that uh, Mr. Pochettino has to stay in Paris, most likely. And then Messi sets up Marquinhos for a third goal. So yeah, uh, Messi slowly finding his footing. Um, two, uh, the two Breton wins with uh, big wins. Brest 2-1 in, uh, in Bordeaux. Uh, and Rennes flying high up to second place already with a 2-0 win over Lorient. Well, I, I, I would say one would expect uh, Rennes to beat Lorient. But I think it's still uh, rather remarkable how well they are doing at the moment. Um, Overall, so uh, Ren really, really at the moment probably the second best team, which is not something we can say about Monaco, uh, who after a pretty good performance uh, in the in the Europa League kind of find the full footing in the league, take the lead through a penalty just in stoppage time uh, by Benyeda, but then within seconds of the uh, start of the second half, a penalty is called for Stras Strasbourg and Ajok. Uh, pulled that one away and that's how I and that's how the Monaco had a few chances namely one through Folland where they probably should, 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 should score the winner. Montpellier Lyon uh, from the highlights that I saw was rather even the worst chance for Montpellier to actually take the lead. I mean they hit the crossbar uh, they had a few good chances but then uh, Lyon also from a shot to take the crossbar Paqueta heads it in um, probably professional per, per performance overall but I think um, yeah from what I could tell, Lyon probably deserved the win, but if this was what was drawn, no one could have complained either. And then Marseille in an empty stadium get a, another workman like 1 uh, 0 win, which is something that they sorely needed. Uh, Lirola scoring the winner, where everyone thought it might have been offside, but it wasn't. So uh, I, said, I said it already, Ren now in second place uh, with all these uh, changes. And yeah, on the bottom, it's now Saint Etienne, thanks to Metz uh, winning. Let's move over to uh, the Netherlands, where again, I only saw goals. But the funny thing is, I mean, I'm wearing Ajax. They were the, they were the big winner of the round by just also getting only a workman-like win uh, against Sparta. Tadic scoring a goal that was admittedly uh, nicely played, but, you know, not really stretching themselves much and uh, basically what you expected to. However, the other two title contenders uh, could not keep up the pressure. Feyenoord only manages nil nil at Twente, which, okay, Twente is not uh, that bad of a team. And Herrenveen away from home for uh, PSV is also not a very easy um, opponent. The goal by Carlos Vinicius that gave PSV the lead was a really nicely played goal uh, that I'm... I beg you to watch on YouTube if you can find it. Uh, really nice. But then um, Herrenveen came back and scores uh, the equalizer through Al Hajj in the 773rd. A few minutes later, PSV actually hit the post, so maybe they could have won it. The big clash between Vitesse and that set ends in a draw, uh, which basically doesn't really help uh, at that gaining any ground. Yes, they have a game game hand. If they would win that, they would go maybe as high as eighth potentially. 
but um, they are definitely I mean, having those cope manners to uh, um, to Atalanta and other big 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 players. I think that it has to uh, really uh, regroup, and it's now really the big three: Ajax, PSV, and Feyenoord. And Ajax now take taking lead, and even on points lost. So uh, um, you know, on uh, even if I take into account of makeup game between Feyenoord. Uh, of Feyenoord, they will not go ahead ahead of Ajax. So Ajax, the big winners. Uh, most remarkably is, of course, that Ajax barely have conceded any goals. <laughs> that that is something that is just uh, boggles the mind. In any case, that was it from me. From those two, uh, underappreciated, but I think highly interesting leagues because there are quite some interesting uh, games and players in there. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please drop a line below if you want to add anything uh, to what I've talked about in this video, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click that little bell. So in order to stay updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a good day.